A new report says they could be under threat. The Climate Council has figured out how rising sea levels will impact on Australia and the cost will be hundreds of billions of dollars. Professor Tim Flannery joins us now. Tim, good morning to you. Good now, morning, Sam. Now, which parts of Australia are most at risk from rising sea levels? Look, it's really the low-lying areas um, around our capital cities that have most of the infrastructure. Some of the suburbs, such as Double Bay in Sydney, um, Port Adelaide in Adelaide, and some of the, um, the low-lying suburbs in Melbourne and Brisbane. Right. Oh, gosh, he's looking concerned. I hope his footy club doesn't get washed away. Uh, this, is, yes. this is quite serious, though. If we get sand washed away from a beach or a, stu a storm surge flooding streets, what exactly would be threatened? Would, would we see houses go? Well, we've already seen the flood risk in places like Sydney triple over the last century as a result of sea level rise. And because sea level rise is accelerating, we'll see much more. So that flooding will occur as we get high tides or storm surges or whatever, uh, pushing water into those low-lying areas and causing inundation. Places like Bondi here, they may lose 20 or 40 metres of beach over the century. Um, but that's not really the sort of catastrophic uh, impacts we'll see as major infrastructure like hospitals and roads and houses gets, flood, gets flooded. Yeah, so all of a sudden it's, it's pretty cool to live a little way inland. Tim, is, is it too late or can we do anything to stop this happening? No, look, the great news is this is one of those areas we really can do something about. The science is very clear on this, that we need to act, that the rate of sea level rise is going to be tied with the rate of carbon pollution that we emit, and if we get on top of that, we'll be seeing damage at the lower end of the spectrum rather than the high end of the spectrum. Right. So we've got the time to deal with it. We know what we need to do. We've just got to get the plan of action in place now to reduce those, those uh, pollution streams. OK. So, so do we, we need to call on councils, I guess, first stop? Uh, look, it's a bit of both. We've got to call on governments to start re putting programs in place to reduce carbon pollution. We've got to get the three levels of government working together mm -hmm. to deal with the unavoidable damage that we'll see, um, which, you know, is a, probably the few tens of centimetres of flooding we'll get anyway. Yeah. Um, but we need a plan. We've got the time. If you really want to slug the economy, just let this one rip and don't do anything about it. Otherwise, you know, if we can get government to work together to protect these valuable assets, uh, we'll come off reasonably well. All right. Let's hope they mm. listen, Tim. <laughs> Tim Flannery, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, Sam. Now, the cash cow has a whopping 20 grand to give away this morning. Stay right where you are because the countdown is on to the call that could change your life. Then, you are invited to the wedding of the year, but there are no celebrities in sight, thank God. Meet the ordinary couple who say, 